I'm going to do a smoke test on this 300 TDI engine this morning. Uh, hopefully, if everything goes well, we might have a go at trying to put this in this afternoon. I did a, I did a video on it yesterday and I scrubbed it because you couldn't really see the smoke, so I'm going to do this again. So basically, we've got our smoke tester down on the deck. We've plugged up as many holes as we can. But the thing is, I'm concentrating on the block itself. Now, I've already got the manifold uh, assembly, the exhaust and the intake. Usually I put a plate across there to block out the air intake, uh, the, uh, intake and exhaust ports. The reason for that is that when we put smoke into this engine, it will get everywhere because it's so thin. It'll actually work its way through piston rings and fill the cylinders. And if there's a valve open, it will get into the intake or the exhaust and fill that up. I'm not really concerned about that, if you see what I mean. It's to make sure this is oil tight before we put it in. Uh, now yesterday I did test, like I say, I did do a video on it yesterday, it wasn't too good. Because you couldn't really see, but there was a leak. But, hmm. well, let me get set up. So I've switched the machine on, and I'll leave it for a little while to get warmed up. You can hear the pressure. So we're going to wait and see till we get smoke coming out of the um, the oil filler. Because I, what I do is I put oil, I put smoke down the dipstick tube, which is a great place to put it. Now you can see, I don't know if you can see smoke's coming out of it now. Whoop! There you go. So now we'll put the cap on. And it should stop, but it's not. It's getting lower. Now remember, because I said before I've got the manifold on, I've actually blanked off the exhaust. I've made a plate here with a rubber gasket so it blanks off here, but there's still a bit of a leak. So where's our torch? Where the hell put my torch now? Wait a minute, I'll come get my torch and we'll have a look. Right. One of the places it's leaking, and you can see a little puff of smoke down again, is the wastegate actuator. Now it's behind the, the manifold here. You, 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 it's very hard to pick up. All right, it's very, very hard to pick up. But it's not detrimental because it's, there's no oil involved in there. And another thing, when the manifold warms up, it'll nip round that shaft and take up the clearances a bit. The other place it's leaking from is a little bit out of the, uh, the turbo seal between the turbo, can you see it? And the uh, exhaust. I'm not concerned about that either for the simple reason the seals, the seals in, this, uh, in the turbo aren't like a regular oil seal, otherwise they just burn up. They're like a metal shimmy type thing and uh, kind of difficult. And again, this has got no oil in it. So until it's warm and got oil in it, those seals aren't going to work. But there is a leak. Uh, we've seen it before and it's something that can be a mysterious drop of oil coming down onto the sump and you think it's the sump gasket. Let's go and have a look. Can you see? It's coming out of the um, fuel pump. But where? Because it's difficult to see. Now fortunately my torch is waterproof, but we'll, we'll squirt some water on. And if you look very carefully, it's coming out of the shaft I think there's not much soap in there. Well, you can see where it's coming out of, look. There, that's a good picture, isn't it? Can you see it? I'll back off a bit and see if you can see that. Yeah, it's coming out from below the shaft, so that's difficult to actually get bubbles on, if you see what I mean. 
but that's that's our leak. Ah, you just to say, saw some bubbles there. Just to say. Is it coming? Can you say that? What if I turn the lighter? What if I come back here? Maybe. Maybe that's better. But it's the fuel pump that's leaking. Now that, as I said, will leak all the way down here. And as your engine's, you know, fans going, it'll blow oil down here, down here, and you'll think it's this is leaking. This is fine. There's nothing coming out of here at all. But uh, that's the leak. Am I concerned? Well, I don't know. I don't know what it's going to be like when it gets warmed up. But it's not good. Oh, another place it's leaking is here, look. Now, this is a tricky one to film. I don't know how we're doing that. There. there. That's good, isn't it? I've got a new non-return valve for here. Because this, this should be sucking this way, not blowing that way, if you see what I mean. So, that's, you know, you can test leaks with just soapy water. You see, it's, it's almost stopped now, look. Ah, it's getting a great big bubble in it now. Look at that there. Right, so I'm going to take care of that later. This I'm going to take care of. The other thing I'm going to change whilst it's on the stand is this bearing here. Listen, I can't let it go like that. I put it back on, but I have another timing cover already made up because I changed the, you know, when we did the bearing in here? So I'm going to put that on. So I'll do that. And then we're going to uh, charge this with oil, fill it with oil, and we're going to crank it over to make sure that the oil is getting all round the system. So I've got the new cover on, and that's a lot better. You know, I couldn't let it go like that, could I? Why? Well, I, I, I'm just holding this video here for a minute because I want to show you something important. When you're looking for, uh, like, if you've taken all these bolts out of here, and sometimes you don't know which ones go in the right holes. Well, they're zombie, aren't they? <laughs> um, if you're not sure, take your little prick and shove it down the hole, especially if these are blind holes. Like, and the blind hole means the bolt, the casting is bottomed out. It doesn't go all the way through the block. Put your fingers round your prick, push it into the hole, and get a depth. Right, get a depth. And this is the bolt that goes in. And you can see there, there's an ample clearance. You know, what, what's that, about six, eight millimetres? You mustn't put bolts in just, just to say, like, going to here, because you can break the castings, it's so easy to do. But I'm just going to put this bolt in, and I'm going to show you a really important one, because I've been banging on about it for, <laughs> for a long, long time, and now is an ideal time to show you. I've mentioned this many times before, when you bolt the transfer case on, you must make sure that the short bolts go in from this side and the longer bolts go in from this side. It is crucial because you can hit the gears if you put a bolt in that's too long. Because it's, it's an open hole, it goes all the way through the casting. Now, this is a little tip. I get a bolt that is a little bit smaller and with a locking nut here, I can turn this and I can put this through the hole because this is 8mm and the hole is 10mm push it through and you'll just to say feel the tip of the gear now let me show you, you can try and explain it this is the hole here right it's just at the top of the gearbox oops now so you get your bolt and push it in and you'll feel exactly where the uh, where the gear is so we're going to have a look now to find a bolt that's just a bit shorter than that gap there so in my armory of bolts I've got two here there's this one but look how close this is you see to the depth but if I put this one in, this is a shorter bolt, I really could do something longer, but I don't know where the hell the bloody bolts have gone, they've been off for so long. This one is going to miss quite comfortably. 
And when I put this into the casting, there's going to be about half of that bolt goes into the thread. So I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to pop this bolt in, talk it up, and then we'll put some oil in. If you can recall on this Maxion engine, because this is, was built in Argentina, the uh, drain bung bolt is here, right behind the starter. Now, I fastened it up, but I wasn't really happy with it, if you see what I mean. I wasn't happy with the way it was sealing. And the last thing I want to do is start filling it up with water and it leaks. So I'm going to take it out again. I took the starter off. Starter's up there. And yes, Rob, I did put some oil on the bushing before I put it back in. So let's have a look at that. We'll take it out. Oh, where's my gun? I can take it out with my gun, I suppose. Not sure, maybe. Can I get in? Yes. Yeah. So there's the, uh, where is he now? There's the offending bung. And you can see it's a coarse thread. It's got a bit of rust on it. But there's, it uh, looks like it's had thread tape on it. You see that? So I don't know, maybe, maybe tempted to put a washer on that. So there we go. I put a copper washer on and thread tape. I don't want that to leak. So now I'll put the starter back on, then we'll fill it with oil. Right, so the engine's full of oil. The new oil filter, full of oil. Now take your time filling the oil filter up. Don't just fill it up to the top and think it's okay because it'll drop down as it weeps through the paper. I've also replaced the spill return hose because it was like this. See, it's that hard plastic. The, the proper stuff is this stuff here. It's three and a half millimeter. Three and a half by seven and a half, I believe it is. This is I got this, uh, funnily enough, I got it from a Volkswagen um, aftermarket place. It's from Germany, it's really good stuff. Um, so you can see I buy it by the so, so many meters, 10 meters at a time, because <laughs> they all go sleep, don't they? So, uh, what else have I got to do? Throw that piece over there. Should sleep, stay to my floor. Anyway, spill returns on, um, filter, I've got oil in it. I haven't put the uh, power steering pump on yet, because it's going to be easier to put the power steering pump on. Um, when the engine's in the car, because I can get to the fittings a little easier, you know, like to put the pipes on, and then nip them up, if you see them, you'll understand. Uh, I think what I'm going to try and do is take this pipe fitting off here while it's on the bench. I've got this one off. I can't put them back on, they're going to rust out next to no time. Uh, I'm not going to get JP to make them, but uh, I'll buy a couple of new ones. And then we'll crank it over. Now, when I crank it over, like I said last time, or one of the many times, I just crank off, crack off this bolt off the turbo feed and just make sure oil's going to go through it. Now, we are going to get black oil come through there, even though it's clean oil in. It's got the old oil in. I'm not too concerned about that, but you can't get it all out. That's the problem. Um, that's the problem when you're rebuilding old engines, you know, like an old engine without fully stripping it down. You can't get it all clean. Anyway, we'll, we'll do the best we can. Let's get set up for that. Just out of interest, um, I've taken the fitting here out the top of the bypass hose. But I wanted to show you something uh, quite interesting. Where have I put it? Oh, it's over here. Just a second. If you can remember in a video I did a cutaway of how a thermostat works. And this was an old... Uh, this one came from Ghana and it was all corroded. But you can see the fitting here. Well, the same fitting, replaceable. On this housing here, the fitting is actually cast with the housing. So if it gets corroded, you can't replace it. Just thought I'd pick that up. Right, so now I've rigged up a battery down here. I've also found a, a great little switch. It's a, I think it's a brake light or a stop switch or something like that. But if I just push the little button, it's a momentary like on off switch. That's going to be great, so you're not touching wires together. I've also cracked off 
the pipe off the top of the turbo and I put a little, a little drain thing under there so obviously that's going to miss there and go oil all over the floor so here we go One of the problems with TDIs is when they've been stood a long time, the uh, oil pickup pipe won't pick up. It gets a vacuum in it. I'm going to try something. I'm going to crank it a little bit more. I'll take that pipe off completely. Let's try it again. No. See, this is why I test them. So what I'm going to do... Um, I'm going to go to the oil pickup pipe and try and put some um, oil using a pressure into the system to see if that will do it. Because like I say, this has been stood a long time and of course we didn't take the uh, oil pump off to do the belt or anything like this. So. I usually pack, that's why I pack them with Vaseline so it'll suck up, you know. Uh, it's either that or I take the injectors uh, or take the glow plugs out and get this to spin even faster. In fact, I might just do that first. Right, I've got the glow plugs out now. I'm going to spin it again, it should go faster. Nothing. Bugger. All's not lost. What we'll do now is try and pressurise the system. Um, yeah, that's a tricky one. Ah, buddy. We have a problem. The pickup pipe's not picking up in the oil pump. Um, I've put my pressure, you know, my oil filler into the hole where the pressure sensor goes for the oil. So f straight from the barrel, through the pump, into the engine itself. And look what happens when I press the pump. You can see oil's coming out. But it won't come out when it's, um, it won't come out when it's cranking. Is it because it's not f spinning fast enough? I don't know. I wonder if it. I wonder if it just wants a, a little bit of a buzz to get it going. I don't know. It should. It should come out. Can't understand it. But at least oil's in the galleries and things like that. That's a good thing. Um, you know, all the head's nice and wet. I'm going to put this back onto, I'm going to put this pipe on, I'm going to check, spin it over and see if any oil is going through the rocker box. Great success. I now have oil spewing out of here. See? Plenty of oil. I must admit I did cheat a little bit. I put the glow plugs in and give it a little buzz, buzz of easy start and it just got that initial kick round and off it went. It tried to start, obviously, well it went brrrm and then got the other one. So that's maybe a little trick you can use at home because you've got nothing to lose. So now we've got, we know that, because you see once, when you've got those uh, oil pumps and the front cover, if you lose its vacuum that goes down into the sump 
then you have a hell of a time trying to pull it back up if there's an airspace. It's, it's tr it can't spin fast enough. So yeah, that's good. We're a bit messy, but um, we got there in the end. So, time's it now? Half past twelve. Sunday lunch. I wonder. I wonder what's for, for lunch today. Probably bloody soup as usual. Right. I'm happy with that. We're going to sort of box all this lot up, and um, we might put it in after lunch. We'll see. Mm -hmm.